See one of the aspects in the study of pila, that is apple's nail, is organs of pileal complex. This actually deals with those organs which are situated in the mantle cavity or pileal cavity of this animal. Before I explain it, let us get aware with the animal that is pila globosa. This animal is commonly known as apple snail and it is uh, very well found in uh, India uh, in almost every part of our country. This animal is found and the species which is commonly occurring is pila globosa. See uh, the external feature of this animal. In this diagram you can see only the shell portion of the animal. It is actually empty shell. The internal organs are totally lacking. This uh, area which I am showing here is actually mouth of the shell. This is opening of the shell and this is the only large uh, opening here. The another opening is very minute one that is located here in this corner that is called as umbilicus. But this opening is quite important because through this uh, exit it can protrude out its anterior portion that is head portion along with the foot. And you can see this is major coil of its body. This is called as body hole. And just above it is the penultimate hole. This one is penultimate hole. And the uppermost round, you know, structure is called as apex. This is oldest uh, hole of its body. And uh, here in this portion you can see the dorsal part of the animal, the body hold is mainly shown here and you can see that there are lines of growth present on it. The lines of growth are very distinctly seen over here. So in this diagram uh, you can observe all such things in well detail. See this is apex of the shell as I said it is the oldest portion and uh, then uh, you can see these are other you know holes this one is penultimate hole or coil and uh, the connections between the holes are called as sutures these are lines of growth which are also referred as varices single one is varix so by observing this we can see that the animal has actually uh, grown to this much extent and as i said this one is the body hole, the largest portion in which major, of, major portion of its body gets accommodated. Internally, you know, there is calumella which actually supports the entire, you know, shell. Shells are actually coiled around the calumella and this calumella is a hollow axis which opens in the lower portion through a very minute aperture that is called as umbilicus. This one is mouth of the shell which is covered with upper coulomb. So this covering is upper coulomb here and the margin of the opening of shell is re referred as peristome. So this is actually peristome uh, which gets covered with this upper coulomb and uh, lines of growth uh, could be seen on the upper coulomb also. The inner portion of this upper coulomb is referred as nucleus. So these are some of the structures you can very distinctly uh, label, observe in the external morphology of this animal. Now you have to remove this shell. See uh, this shell has to be removed, particularly the portion of the body hole. This is a hard structure so by using a scalpel when you will break it then you can see the inner soft portion of its body. So this <clears throat> portion could be seen by removing the shell of the animal particularly the shell of uh, body hole area so you can see the mantle mantle which is also called as pallium this is actually soft integument we know that mollusca means soft bodied animal so because the body is quite soft for its protection the external shell is present and that is actually secreted by mantle itself mantle or pallium secretes the external shell. 
Now uh, in the anterior side, you can see this is head portion. Head portion is well demarcated here. And it is in the form of, uh, you know, snout. This is snout, which bears a pair of smaller tentacles referred as first pair of tentacles. So this one is first pair of tentacle. Then uh, the longer tentacles are second pair of tentacles. So these two are second pair of tentacles. And then it, behind the second pair of tentacles, you can see a pair of eyes. So this is actually eye, which is situated on uh, a eye stalk. Likewise, this one is the eye of the left side. You can demarcate the left and right side. This is actually left side of the body. And this one is right side of the body. So this is left eye. This one is right eye. And uh, in between the first pair of tentacle, its mouth is located. So you can see a vertical slit over here. And that slit is actually its mouth. And below this head portion, this muscular area is its foot. So this is foot. You see, I'm moving the cursor. And this entire area is muscular part. And this is foot. So when the animal protrudes, or it uh, actually puts its mouth outside the cell uh, through the major opening, then you can see the entire structure foot and just above it, its head portion will be located. And there are two other distinct portions. One is left nuchal lobe. So here this projection is actually left muscular portion. This is left nuchal lobe, which is also called as left pseudopipodium. Likewise, in the right side, this is right nuchal lobe or right pseudopipodium. So these are two uh, actually siphon-like structures through which water will be going inside the body and it will be coming out through the right pseudepipodium or right nuchal lobe. When you will touch the mantle, it will be quite soft portion. And uh, in the lower side, this portion is actually a muscular hood. It is actually uh, uh, covering the mantle cavity mantle cavity or pallial cavity that is situated on the dorsal anterior portion of its body. We all know that this mantle cavity is uh, uh, situated in the posterior side in larval form, but because of dorsal, it is brought to the anterior side. And when it is brought to the anterior side by rotating 180 degree, then it comes very close to the mouth Rather, it is situated just above the head portion. And uh, inside that, uh, there are certain organs. Those organs are called as organs of pallial complex. We will be uh, observing those structures. But we should know that the head portion can be brought inside the mantle cavity. So this is actually a spacious area. And that we can see by making a cut here in the mantle. So if we have to observe the organs of pallial complex, then with the help of scissor, we will be making a cut from this right side. See, from this right side, particularly from this right nuchal lobe, you make a cut and go to the posterior side. So up to this place only. Make a cut only from this portion to this portion. And after making that cut, you will have to put this left side area on the left side so that you can see the organs which are situated in the cavity because when you will make a cut from this portion to the posterior side then you would be able to observe the organs which are situated in the mantle cavity now in this diagram you can observe all those structures which are present in the mantle cavity as i just said that this is anterior part which is head portion this is first pair of tentacle, is smaller in size. In between the two tentacles, there will be a vertical slit, that is its mouth. Behind the first pair of tentacles, second pair of tentacles are there, which are longer. Then a pair of eyes are situated, which are situated on a small eye stalk or omatophore. So these are omatophore. And a very small, you know, round spot you can see, that is the eye portion. Then behind the eyes, on the left side, there is more prominent 
a muscular uh, siphon like structure it is left pseudoepipodium or left nuchal lobe and here on the right side this is uh, right nuchal lobe or right pseudoepipodium as i said that from this portion you have to make a cut and when you will make a cut then you can see that there is a muscular ridge actually this muscular outgrowth is there i see this is a prominent you know line that is epitenia so you must remember this particular structure that is epitenia epitenia once again i am repeating is a muscular ridge which actually divides the mantle cavity or pallial cavity into two chambers the left chamber is referred as pulmonary chamber so this is pulmonary chamber left side of area and then to the right side of this epitenia is branchial chamber so all these structures which are present in the right side are actually the part of uh, branchial chamber and those which are situated on the left side of epitenia are the uh, organs of pallial complex of the left side so <clears throat> only two organs are there in the left side of this epitenia the first prominent structure is pulmonary sac as i said when you will make a cut uh, you can observe epitenia means before making a cut you can see that there is a prominent ridge so from that portion you can make a cut you can go to the posterior side and then uh, you can put the flap on the left side so this area is pulmonary sac it is a lung like structure it it actually helps in aerial mode of respiration when the animal is on the land when it is uh, leading terrestrial mode of life or when it is present on the upper surface of water then it would be respiring with the help of its pulmonary sac there is an opening of pulmonary sac so this one is a wide opening and uh, when you will put this pulmonary sac on the left side you can see this opening internally it is vascular structure this pulmonary sac is a vascular structure that is why it acts as lung for uh, aerial mode of respiration and then the other structure the second one is aspirating this is actually a chemoreceptor structure exactly what happens when water enters through the left nuchal lobe then it comes in contact with the aspirating because aspirating would be hanging uh, in the way so the incoming water that will be chemically tested by the aspirating because there are sensory structures which can test the chemical nature of water so these are two prominent structures one is pulmonary sac that helps in aerial respiration and the other one is aspirating that is a chemoreceptor and we know that when uh, water actually enters when it is in aquatic mode of life when the animal is drowned in the water then water enters through left nuchal lobe it will come to the pulmonary chamber area and then it can pass to the branchial chamber only when the epitenia is uh, lower down when it is going downward so it acts as diaphragm this epitenia which divides the mantle cavity into two distinct Uh, asymmetrical chamber that is pulmonary chamber and branchial chamber it works as a diaphragm so when it goes downward then this water which has come in the pulmonary chamber will be going to the branchial chamber and in the branchial chamber uh, first it will come in contact with the gills so this is a single gill it is a monopectinate gill that is there is an axis and on one side of this axis there are lamellae gill lamellae so hundreds and thousands of gill lamellae are there which actually helps in uh, exchange of gases that is intake of oxygen and removal of carbon dioxide because these individual lamellae are supplied with blood capillaries so they provide surface for the exchange of gases so water that comes in the branchial chamber that will actually wash the entire uh, gill lamellae and will then be going outside through the right nuchal lobe so this is one important structure that is epitenia here you can see uh, um epitenia that is the partition in between the two then the 
main structure which is being observed here is tenidium tenidium means gill so there is a single gill monopectinate and it is also called as tenidium as i said the tenidium is made up of a large number of gill lamellae flap like structure leaf like structure so this is one prominent structure of branchial chamber then the other structure which is present in branchial chamber is terminal part of alimentary canal you see this is intestinal portion and then this portion is rectum this is actually terminal portion of intestine and this is rectum which is opening in the uh, branchial chamber through anal opening so this is actually anal aperture and this is part of alimentary canal then the third structure which you can observe will be the genital structure like if it is a female then the vagina is seen uh, in the left side of this rectum so this is part of vagina you can say the terminal part of reproductive system of male and female would be opening in the branchial chamber so there will be female genital opening over here and there will be male genital opening exactly in the same area and uh, at this point penis will also be located if it is male individual so here part of um, reproductive system is also located in the branchial chamber and then you can observe the presence of a small you know aperture here in the branchial chamber and that aperture is actually a renal opening so its kidneys which are uh, actually organs of bojanus will be opening in the branchial chamber through a minute aperture and that is renal opening so you can understand this way that when water will be coming uh, through the left nuchal lobe it will first come to the pulmonary chamber then it will come to the branchial chamber by lowering down of this epithelia and then this water will go outside through the right nuchal lobe and when it goes outside it carries along with it the carbon dioxide which is released into the water if the fecal contents are there that will also go outside through the right nuchal lobe uh, with the help of you know outgoing water currents then the renal content will also be released outside and uh, during breeding season the reproductive structures could be used uh, for uh, the specific purpose so we can understand this way that organs of pallial complex means those organs which are situated in the pallial cavity in the mantle cavity we know the mantle cavity in the larval form is actually located in the posterior side of the animal but because of tarsal uh, the visceral organs get twisted 180 degree pallial organs also get twisted 180 degree so all those structures which are located in the pallial cavity of larva in the posterior side are actually brought to the anterior side so we are observing that these structures they are actually lying on the anterior dorsal position of the animal this has happened only because of tarsal that occurs in uh, almost majority of you know gastropod since pila is a gastropod snail it also shows the phenomenon of tarsal and we know that this animal is amphibious it lives on land as well as it lives aquatic uh, life it can remain drowned in the water for a long time when it is inside uh, means outside the uh, water when it is uh, living a terrestrial mode of life during that time through this left nuchal lobe air will be entering into the pulmonary chamber and then it will ultimately pass into the pulmonary sac through the opening of pulmonary sac so through this opening air will enter into this pulmonary sac or lung and uh, absorption of gases will be taking place then this air will be removed outside through the same route that is through the uh, left nuchal lobe and uh, this way the aerial mode of uh, respiration will be accomplished so hope that this much information would be useful uh, to the students to understand the organs of pallial complex and how they are uh, actually used uh, in the animal to perform different activities or physiological functions